Hi, Gary Hoover here. I want to talk to you about an idea uh, uh, that I, I think is important and maybe will help you understand the way business works and sometimes doesn't work. Best title I could come up with is Beware of the Boys Club. What made me start thinking about this one is watching Google and some of their latest moves. Their acquisition of Motorola Mobility for like six billion dollars, that's the Motorola cell phone business, included a lot of patents, but uh, uh, you know, look at what they're doing and they want to get control of their gadgets, kind of like Apple has control of their gadgets. And uh, as I've watched the big players, um, you watch an Amazon, Apple, uh, Google, Microsoft, I've seen this pattern over and over again and what you tend to see is that the big players in an industry have a limited view of who matters. They put boundaries, they put barriers on their thinking. So it's kind of like they're sitting there, I wish I had some other people here when I'm shooting this, but you know, so oh, you're Apple and I'm Google, I better watch what you do and I better watch every move you make and if you go left, I gotta go right. And my whole life becomes bound around what you're doing, especially if you're successful. And, 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 and I look and say, what's Microsoft doing? And we're looking at what I call the boys club. It's like you're a closed group. You're a closed circle. I've seen this over and over again. I saw when Kohl's, a very successful retail chain, K-O-H-L apostrophe S, when they went out and started using new type of shopping carts, little black carts with like fabric uh, uh, basket things. Well, all the other retailers who were suffering under Kohl's, Kohl's was taking market share from them, they all said, oh, we got to have black uh, carts, you know. No, let's do what they're doing. Uh, at, at Bookstop, the company I started, we were the first bookstore chain that had a membership, a loyalty program, a membership card. And it was some years later before the two dying companies, B. Dalton and Walden Books, both said, oh, we got to have a card. Because they'd seen us taking market share and they thought maybe the card was why. When they went into it, they didn't know why they had the card. They didn't anticipate all the strengths and weaknesses of that idea, which we had either anticipated or learned the hard way by doing it for several years. The thing is, people in positions of power tend to, and maybe everybody, but certainly people in positions of power tend to look at this limited group. I once heard the story, there's no way to confirm this, but I totally believe it, a consultant, he was making reports to IBM when they were in the PC business. And you know, they got in the PC business a little late, but then they took over, they dominated, and they were r ruling the roost. And, and this consultant was providing reports to them on what are the other PC makers, and who's doing what, and who's rising, and who's falling. And, and they said, well, you know, there was this CompuAd, but they went away, and there's this gateway, and we don't know what's going to become of them. And, you know, there are a lot of players that people forget. And, and they said, and, and there's this Dell company, and they're making a presentation to IBM, and they said, Dell looks like they may stick around. You know, they used to be, whatever, 15th biggest, and now they're up to 12th, or whatever. We maybe better watch them. And the consultant told me, at one point, the IBM executives turned to him and said, look, we never want to hear the name Dell again in this room. You're wasting our time. This is just another little fly-by-night thing. It's going to go away like all the others. Forget about it. Let's focus on the power players. Well, that's a, there's a pattern there, which is a lot of what we do of all my classes and everything, is we're looking for patterns. And, and you know, when, when Sears was on top of the world and they looked, who should we fear? They weren't looking at Walmart. They were looking at J.C. Penney, at Montgomery Ward, at Kmart. When General Motors was on top of the world, they probably didn't fear anybody, but if they did, they looked at Ford or Chrysler. They weren't paying attention to Toyota. U.S. Steel was not looking at Nucor. You know, we, we see it over and over and over again where people, they, they limit what they're looking at. And, and in fact, a big chunk of the innovations in history come from surprising places, come from small firms. Even if it's a big firm that adopts them and makes them successful, but, but often it isn't. You know, parallel to that might be is take this as a challenge. Who is going to be the dominant player in the making of non-gasoline powered automobiles? Who is going to be, 50 years from now, the world's top or number two or three, who are going to be the kings of the hill then? Well, it's probably one of three groups. One, an existing major automaker. Two, an existing company from some other field, General Electric, or somebody moves into it, Samsung, you know, comes into it in a big way or something, or buys a small car making thing and redoes it completely. That's how General Motors took over the diesel locomotive business. They bought little companies and then they figured out how to make it great and they ruled that industry for a long time. So one of the big current players, a current big player but new to the field, 
or thirdly, somebody we haven't seen before. That's like Google when it became the biggest search engine. Who would have thunk it could have taken on uh, AltaVista and InfoSeek and all the ones if you're old enough to remember them. So there, and the thing is when you look at those three choices, the odds are reasonably high, uh, 20 to 40 percent maybe. The odds are reasonably high it'll be a company that's not on the current list, that's not on the radar, that really becomes successful in either hybrid cars or hydrogen cars or the next step or whatever. The thing is you need to be looking all around you. You need to have your eyes open. You need to have all your senses turned on. And you can't limit yourself to like this closed group that the only people that matter are so and so. Hey, they may be the only people that matter for the next three months or the next six months or even the next year. But if you're going to do anything important in life, you've got to be looking out five years and ten years and have some sense of how things change. So I'm always watching the big companies. I'm always watching whether it's Google or Procter & Gamble or some of my favorite companies. United Parcel Service, Federal Express, uh, um, and seeing, do they see the world this way? Do they have it a limited view? Or are they really out there exploring? I'm looking for hints that let me know that. And whatever your enterprise is doing, please don't trap yourself in this mindset. Or if you're outside things and looking in, don't just pay attention to Apple and Google and Microsoft and Amazon, you know? Take a broader view of things and look everywhere for innovation and ideas. This is Gary Hoover with another idea for you. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.